Okay, so imagine you put 100 INFPs, ISTPs, ISFPs and INTPs in the same room. What's the key problem that keeps coming up in their discussion? What is the thing that annoys an INFP more than anything? Well, it is the group. It is group control. It is people telling you what to do. It is people pushing and pulling and prodding on you constantly, nagging you about uh, appointments, dates and exams and schedules and all those things that uh, people feel and tell you to do. People are constantly forcing their opinions on you. They're telling you what to like, how to dress, what to wear, how to talk. And all those things are constantly eating on the INTP's soul. It is that key frustration, annoyance, stressor that you constantly have on you. I mean, just because it's a stressor, it doesn't mean it's a negative thing, but it's definitely constantly a key challenge and anxiety. Oh my god, now people will give me a hard time again because I'm late. Oh no, now people will tell me I can't wear that and goddamn, now people are going to be pushing me about that date or that party and I just don't want to go. <laughs> and uh, when you're an INP or an INTP, it can be that you feel like constantly people are staring at you. You feel like people are constantly looking at you like you've done something weird, like you are the weird one, when in reality... <laughs> To you, maybe other people are quite weird as well. So INFPs and INTPs, they're lone wolves, they're lone wolfers. So what does it mean to be lone wolfing? It means to think of your own way, your own pace, your own method of doing and solving a problem. You want to come up with, on your own, a solution for everything you do. You want to do things your way and according to who you are. Your sense of identity is the key predominant concern in your life. And living in tune with yourself is more important than anything. To compromise yourself or to adjust to other people is sometimes necessary but still very difficult for you. You'd rather not do it. If you could avoid it, you would rather prefer that people kept their voices to themselves and let you be you. Now, the problem with lone wolfing is it's not fun long term and it can feel alienating and isolating to lone wolf too hard. A lot of INTPs and ISFPs alike crave connection and intimacy with the group and want to be validated by the tribe for who they are and for what they do. They want people to compliment them on and accept them fully and unconditionally for who they are. So they need that sense of having a tribe around you that accepts you and lets you be true to yourself. <laughs> the key dream, the key ideal that they're all striving towards is finding an identity, expressing yourself, being true to yourself, doing things your way, standing up for your truth without being bullied by the tribe for doing it. The tribe letting you go and saying, okay, maybe we should listen, maybe he's right, maybe he knows what he's talking about. Imagine the relief if you could express yourself without anybody having an opinion. Imagine if you could say what was, in your opinion, the truth without anybody questioning it or saying that's wrong or you can't think that. Now the good thing about INFPs and ISTPs alike is that they're good at setting boundaries for themselves. If people tell you to do something, you're usually pretty good at saying no. You're good at saying I don't want to do that, or I don't like that, or that's wrong. You're good at speaking out for your code of ethics or your beliefs. So you won't let people push you around, you won't let people uh, drag you around. And often if you feel that people are trying to control you or manipulate you, uh, you have a tendency to avoid those people and to push them away or let them go. And so your need to be alone and to manage yourself and to s protect your inner lone wolf is a key concern in your life and something you constantly value. Still, there is a need to sometimes let go of yourself and to not... Be afraid of the judgment that you might face from outside world. People are not trying to attack you. They're not trying to go against who you are. They're not trying to challenge your identity. Most of the time, people are simply trying to express themselves just like you are expressing yourself. 
And so when other people tell you what to do, take it as a recommendation rather than as an order. Take it as a suggestion, but not as something you have to do. Learn to disagree with somebody and still do your thing, but still appreciate their input. Yeah, I see why you said that, but I'm not going to do that. I understand what you want, but I don't plan to do it. I don't think this is right for me. But I still want to be your friend and I still want to hang out with you despite having a different opinion. When you're an INFP or an INTP, that level of maturity of being able to let go of the fact that not everybody is going to think like you or not everybody is going to validate you or uh, people are going to think you're weird but they're still going to like you, that maturity is very important. Knowing that people can disagree with me or uh, sometimes question me or sometimes go against me without being enemies without being against me they might still like me they might still st they just need to understand who i am and to accept my pace a lot of time a lot of confrontation and loneliness can be abandoned and can be let go of if you can learn to thrive around people who are different from you now infps and isfps and isdps alike they're all people that can struggle in relationships because of their inner lone wolf and their tendency towards being towards themselves. You know, in a relationship, you're supposed to compromise and you're supposed to do things differently. And here, I think there is an important aspect of maturity as well for an INFP to find. What you have to do and recognize is, uh, yes, I can compromise in a situation and do something that I don't believe in or something I find to be wrong because I trust in another person I can trust in the tribe and that the tribe has and knows better than me at times I can trust and accept that sometimes other people have good and valid feedback even if I cannot immediately understand or agree with it sometimes I will do what you say sometimes I will listen to and trust you on something even if I myself cannot make sense of it or even if I find it to be weird this is also what's gonna lead to key character growth for you what that means is you're going to be finding new sides in yourself. This stress, this pushing, this prodding, this pulling can actually lead somewhere. So what can happen is other people might advise you or guide you towards something positive. You never thought it would be positive. Your gut feeling was, no, that cannot be fun. How can people like that? But when you listen to them and when you let them take you and drag you along, you came to ex discover something really amazing and sometimes things surprise you. You don't truly know always how things are going to turn out. You never truly know everything. You don't have all the answers and you have not experienced everything. It's hard to say something about something you've never tried. And that level of openness is the key to learning to thrive in relationships as an INFP or an INTP. So. Are you a 16 personality types lone wolf? Are you an INFP or an ISTP who's struggling to deal with pressure from the external world? Do you see what I mean with uh, sometimes needing to let go and open up to other people while still remembering to set some boundaries for yourself like here but no further? I can go there and I can try that out but I might leave after an hour. I can come to that party but I will probably not stay for long or I'll bring a book in case it gets boring. You know, can you see the the conflict of being an INFP or an ISTP and can you stand above it in yourself and recognize when it's unhealthy as well as when it is healthy? That's my question for you. Thanks everyone for watching this video and see you all in the next video.